What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to episode 2 of the series in which we are taking my grandfather's E46 330Ci and restoring it, making it a little bit better. In the last episode, we got the paint as clean as it's ever been in his whole life. We clay barred it, we iron, did iron remover, uh, I cleaned off the soft top as best I could. Now, we are going to be doing paint correction. If you guys haven't seen the last video, please make sure you go watch that. Now to start this video, what I'm going to do is do a little walk around and just show you guys the damage that the car has. So let's start that. But before we get into that, please make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so you guys can see the next episode in which we ceramic coat this car. Also make sure you leave a like on the video and leave a comment. So as you can see, this is just super clean. It's just so many swirls. There are scratches in the front as well as paint chips all over that I'm going to be dealing with. Headlights are starting to go a little bit yellow, so I'm going to be clearing those up. Giant paint transfer there. Uh, more scratches, those are going to have to get got by hand. Uh, paint transfer where the previous owner had a bunch of door dings, as you can see. Can't do anything about the door dings, can deal with the paint transfer. More scratches. Back here, I can't tell if this is clear coat burn through or if it's they tried dealing with the scratches, because it follows the scratches. So I can't tell if they tried dealing with the scratches by polishing them themselves and completely ruined the clear coat, or if they like sanded it or something. I'm hoping it's like sanding so I can actually deal with it. Back, I can't do anything about those dings, but I can like try and fill them in with paint, I guess. Back here, this is kind of grayed out on the plastic. I can deal, I can deal with that. Another scratch right there. More door dings, more scratches. Previous owners were not kind to this. Another giant scratch right along there. And overall, a lot of swirling. So I'm gonna be dealing with all the paint chips. Then I'm gonna be paint correcting it, and I'm gonna also do the uh, black trim restore. So let's get into it. Inside, underneath a spotlight, you can really see how bad the swirling is. Focus on, okay, you're not focusing. There you go. You can really see how bad the swirling is in here. That's what we're taking out today. Okay, before I start the actual paint correction process, I am going to first fill in these little rock chips just because they, yeah, they're unsightly and I don't want to strip paint away and I want to get them filled in. And I also want to level it out with the actual paint correction. So I'm using the BMW Monaco Blue. Shake it up. However, when you see this is a brush and you don't want to use the brush because that just makes it absolutely nasty. So I've got this, they recommended this on Ammo NYC. It is a fine, la fine line painting pen. Oh, I need gloves for this. Let me grab my gloves real quick. So this pen, as you can see, is just absolutely tiny. You basically just fill it with your ink and then tap it like that to fill it in. I will get a macro shot of me actually filling this in once I've got it. But to actually fill this little piece, you have to basically brush your ink in. So basically what you do is you take your paint and you try to catch drips of the paint inside of your, like that. Also, I apologize about all the noise in the background. The neighbor's kids are having a giant outdoor party. And then from here, now that you have it full, you tap to get it to come out. There we go. Now you can see it's coming out. See, so I'm gonna get in close. Now the primary purpose of touch-up paint like this is not to actually uh, make the car look good. It helps, but I think Ammo NYC described it best. It's like using a band-aid. You don't want to. You're not trying to make yourself look good. It's a benefit, but the main advantage of touch-up paint is to prevent it from rusting in the future. So yeah, I'm gonna let that dry. I might have to put in a second coat in a little bit, but I'm gonna do the rest of the car. All right, first off, I genuinely apologize about all the kids screaming in the background. I have no clue how long that's supposed to go on for, and I can't stop it. But the next thing we're doing back here is we're gonna be basically restoring this black trim back here that's faded using Adam's black trim restorer that works absolutely amazingly. Put a line, let it soak, and then, look at that, wow. 
And it's fine to go over reflectors like that because I polish off the any extras that I have. Like anything that's, um, oh, look at that. Wow. Turned into Owen Wilson for a second, but. Let that soak for a second, then I'm gonna polish it off with a microfiber just for any extras. But look at that's actually black now again. That's insane. Looks so good. I also have spots on the mirrors I'm gonna do, and then I'm gonna call it good for this. And we get to taping and paint correcting. Uh, oh, I need to black trim restore this. I forgot to do that. I'm gonna do that real quick. Oh, and that piece too. Let me get this real quick. I will show you the before and after, and then let's get to taping. All right, y'all remember that before? Check out the after. So much darker. Anyways, let's get on to taping. Okay, now we get to the part of the detail that is fun in air quotes. Because I have to tape everything. Things that need tape. Grill. Headlights. Side indicators. Mirrors. This piece. Chrome. The entire roof. This needs to be taped. Those, the windshield and the windows. There's a lot that needs to be taped. Okay, so for tape, I've got a big pack of Scotch Blue. It's not technically automotive tape, but it works. So I'm not paying extra for automotive tape. All right, there you go. As you can see, I taped off the grills and a little bit of where I might accidentally run over. I shouldn't, I really shouldn't. But like down the center, I'm gonna have to just get with my fingers, I think, if I even wanna do it. But next, I'm gonna do the headlights and then I will pick it up when I get to the roof and show y'all what I have planned for the roof. All right, I said I had a little thing to deal with the roof. The thing is giant plastic bags. These are actually the wheel bags that came with my uh, wheel kit for the car dipping. But I figured these will work perfectly if I just open them up. And basically what I do is I'm gonna tape this up like so. I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out how I wanna tape this side, uh, cover as much of the roof as possible. And I will come back once I've figured that out. I'm gonna tape that one like this. There we go. That is that one taped. I had an idea for the front, and I think it'll work, where basically I crack this, tuck this piece underneath, and then just close it and latch it in. And it shouldn't pull itself out, and I can still be able to paint crack this by hand. This window is not down as much as I thought the others. I think that works. My theory made sense. Pull this back and get it taped up. Check it out, check it out. We are taped off fully. Only took me way too long. Now, I have one more thing to take. I'm splitting it into three parts right along here because I wanna see how the one step does compared to a compound and just a regular polish. So we're gonna do compound, one step, polish. So, prepping the pad, of course you do. Shake this up. So you hit it with that. Just set that on the hood because that's not getting anywhere. Rub it in. Hit it one more time with four steps or four spots. One, two, three, four. And you go bump, 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 bump. Spread it. And good work. Go. Let's take it off. Just a polish took us from that many swirls to that many. I mean, it's enough to get the camera to fail to focus. I mean, there's a difference. That's crazy. So this is gonna be one step. That's gonna be compound. You saw what I did. 
I'm just gonna do it. Um, I'm using fo blue foam pads for those because I'm using a microfiber cutting when I actually do it. All right, this is all three done. Let's start with regular. That's with nothing. This is with just compound on a blue foam pad. You can see it's much better, still a couple swirls. This is the one step, slightly more swirls, and then this is the polish with the most swirls. So it worked exactly as I did. This one has the best cut, but also leaves some pillaring behind. And the one step was absolutely the easiest to work with. So I think that's what I'm using tomorrow. But all in all, that is a huge difference. I also think, look at the clarity difference in the paint. That's why the one step is there. You can see how much hazier it is up in here. Yeah, that's why the one step exists. Anyways, let's peel this off. There we go. All right, the pad, as you do, I'm gonna hit it with three drops. I'm gonna hit a detail spray. One, two, three. I'm actually gonna do four because of how small those were. Single hit of detail spray. And then let's take on the same size area. One, two, go a little bit wider this time. Uh, it's actually not too bad. Knock it down with this. And look at that polish. Okay, it got hot in a couple spots. And then now that I did that, you see how this pad is all compressed. Take the brush, work the bristles back up. And now that I've primed the pad too, I only need to do three drops. Or I guess four drops. I don't need to do a huge amount for every time. on the hood and my pad is starting to get clogged up which is why I filled my air compressor and I'm gonna blow out my pad. The way you do that is literally like that. Now the pad's blown out I can get back to it.
All right, it's a couple days later, hence why I'm wearing a different outfit, because I had to take a break to do somebody else's detail, and my arms just got super tired. Uh, I'm going to finish up with this side of the car and see where we stand after that. I think I'm going to take the 5 inch to this, and these parts, and then the 3 inch along this panel up here. So let's get to it. Alright, so I did that side of the car and this side of the car, which means the only thing we have left is the trunk. And I put that off till the very end for one reason, it's kind of sketching me out. So I will zoom in close and show y'all. Alright, I figure it's just easiest. There you go, look at that. I can't tell if that's clear coat failure or if it's sanding marks. Or this, this whole trunk is just destroyed. And so I'm hoping you can at least get it into a better condition. Yeah, that looks terrible compared to the look at that mirror shine and then you have that so the only thing sketching me out about this is that i'm afraid it might be clear coat failure and if it is that means that that the trunk's ruined so i guess the best thing to do is just go for it and hope Okay, moment of truth. They came out. Yes, they came out. That is exactly what I was hoping would happen. Oh, that is so fantastic. That makes my day so good. Oh, yes. Well, I think to really, really get, the, yeah, the, it won't even focus. That's how shiny it is. To really get an example of just how good this is, before and after. That is insane. I'm so happy. All right, I'm gonna knock out the rest of this and then we can get onto polishing before we do the ceramic coating, which will be the next video. Okay, check that out, guys. I know a couple of the deep scratches are still in there, but like, compared to the way that was, that is just bonkers. All right, it's dark. I have now finished the compounding. That took way too long. I think I'm 10 hours on the compounding probably, if not more. But now we're on to polishing. And to polish, I'm going to be using a white foam pad and white polish. Literally that simple. Same exact process as compounding. I work two foot by two foot, wipe it off. Let's go. Okay, so polishing isn't really supposed to radically transform the paint the same way compounding does. Instead, basically what polishing does is it takes out any of the marks that compound left behind when they, or that compound introduced to the paint. So, I've got my pad all set up. Like I said, the difference isn't huge, but it is noticeable. Look at the quality of the light. It is noticeable how much sharper it is over here versus over here. So that's why you polish. So I'm gonna do the rest of the car and then, yeah, I'll show you a couple of different clips of how I'm polishing, but I'm gonna knock it out because it's literally that same thing for the entire car.
That is a wrap on correcting the car. Look at how shiny that is. This is the best I've ever seen this paint. But I think I'm going to wrap it up here for this video. So please make sure y'all stick around, subscribe for the next one in which we ceramic coat the car. And until next time, goodbye.